Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lighting a Spark, where we're going to talk about the upcoming 250th or semi quincentennial celebration of the American Revolution and the event that started it all, the attack on the HMS Gatsby. I'm Lane Sparkman, and I'm going to be your MC and moderator for this session. But I'm delighted to begin by introducing our Secretary of State, Nellie Gorbea, who's going to get us started today. Good morning, everyone. It is truly an honor to be kicking off the first ever virtual Rhode Island Statewide Historic Preservation Conference. Thank you to the Rhode Island Council of the Humanities and the Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission for the chance to speak with all of you today. This past year has forced us all to adapt and to make some difficult adjustments. I really commend your work to come up with innovative ways for people to safely experience Rhode Island's historic places. As Secretary of State here in Rhode Island, I have the honor of overseeing our Rhode Island State Archives. So the mission of bringing our state's incredible history into people's homes is one I know well. And, and it's also one that I absolutely love. Um, you know, our mission at the state, at the archives is to protect, maintain, and preserve Rhode Island's powerful history. Uh, it's our own time capsule where we can see the independent spirit our state has always had and I hope will always have. Of course, a key part of that history is the burning of the HMS Gatsby, a British schooner that was patrolling the area around Newport in, in um, 1772. As we know, a group of colonists attacked, boarded, and, and burned the ship with no casualties suffered. It was the first true act of violent rebellion in the birth of our country. Sorry to those of you who are in Massachusetts, the, you know, the Boston Tea Party fans, but Rhode Island did it first by more than a year. Much of what we know about this incredibly important event comes directly from the Gatsby Papers, a collection of documents in our state archives that includes depositions, royal decrees, and even an eyewitness account from a young indentured servant of African heritage living on Prudence Island. Rhode Island was also the first colony to renounce King George III, the famous act of renunciation uh, on May 4th, 1776. That's two full months ahead of the Declaration of Independence. So as we close in on this 250th commemoration of these vital em events in American history, it's time to make sure Little Rhodey gets the big historical attention it deserves. And not just to set the record straight. The historical significance of the Gatsby and Rhode Island's role in the birth of our country can absolutely spur tourism and stimulate our economy locally. Pre-pandemic, the convention and, and tourism industries generated $84 million of direct spending each year. My hope is that we can tap into these 250th commemorations to add to our vibrant tourism history, uh, industry. So as a lover of history, it was almost my major in college. I, it really was. Um, and someone who's keenly aware of the challenges ahead in our economic recovery, I'm calling on each of you to help us get people thinking about these Rhode Island milestones. And we want to hear your ideas on ways we can capture some of the spirit of these historic events, share it with others, and bring people to Rhode Island. After all, we'll have the chance to be the first once again because our commemorations come up before everyone else's. Another way, great way that you can be an ambassador for our state is to support legislation I introduced this year to create a special commission known as the Rhode Island Semiquincentennial, or the Rhode Island 250th, for those of us who are, are, have a hard time with that word. Um, the Rhode Island 250th, 250th Commission. Um, this bill will com uh, would commemorate the 250th anniversary of the founding of our country and the important role that Rhode Island has played. It would also increase civic engagement and literacy, boost tourism, and allow Rhode Island to com collaborate with and, and receive funding from the National Commemoration Organization, America 250. The bill is up for a vote on the Senate floor this coming Tuesday. It's Senate Bill 810, and I want to thank our sponsors, Senator Goodwin, McCaffrey, Archambault, and Pearson, uh, for putting it forward on the Senate side. We're hoping to get it moving through our House of Representatives as well. And on the House side, it's House Bill 6002, and our sponsors are Representatives Kennedy, Abney, Azanaro, Edwards, McNamara, Shanley, Solomon, and Vella Wilkinson. 
So don't be shy. Reach out to any of them and all, or actually reach out to your own senator and representative and tell them to support Rhode Island 250th Commission. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to speak with you today. And thank you for your role in helping Rhode Island take this much deserved place in the national spotlight when it comes to our country's history. I know that together we can make this 250th commemoration one that builds civic literacy, boosts tourism, and gives our economy a much needed shot in the arm. And with that, I'll turn it back over to our moderator and my associate of direct, my associate director of Ed, education and public programs, Lane Sparkman. Take it away, Lane. Unmute. Thanks so much, Secretary. Um, okay, in a minute, we're going to hear from the force behind the Gatsby Days celebrations that so many Rhode Islanders know and love. Um, but before I turn it over to them, just a couple of housekeeping details. If you'd like to know more about any of today's speakers, you can just click on the button that says speakers just below the session title. And at the right of the screen, you'll see tabs that say chat, polls, attendees, and Q&A. By now, I think we're all pretty familiar with these features. Uh, we will run a few polls just for fun later in the session. Those questions will pop right up on your screen, so no need to hunt for them when they're launched. And there will be some time at the end for Q&A. So please, if you have questions for the panelists, put them into the Q&A tab all the way at the right, not in the chat. We'll all keep an eye on those questions, and we may answer simple ones during the presentation. But for the most part, we'll share the Q&A um, questions at the end with the panelists after they've finished their formal presentations. And if your question is directed to someone specific, you can certainly put that in your question. Otherwise, I'll just direct them to the appropriate person. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Steve Miller and John Kincannon from the Gatsby Days Committee to tell us about their plans. Okay, well, welcome, everybody. Uh, our current president, Gina Dooley, is uh, unfortunately uh not going to be able to be here today because of uh, a dental emergency in her family so that's not going to be there but we do have our presentation up and i'm going to be taking the place of uh the current president steve miller will uh go as incoming president and i'll finish up with uh some of the historic preservation notes uh related to the gatsby so uh the Gatsby Days Committee is a civic-minded nonprofit organization that operates many community events, all well-known, such as Gatsby Day Parade each June. Uh, we uh, These events are all commemorating the 1772 burning of the HMS Gatsby uh, as a first blow for freedom. So the local Sons of Liberty attacked and burned the Gatsby, and from historical records, we might uh, know the names of about half of them. Uh, but no one would tell the British just who did the burning. They were close lips, since both were related either by blood, marriage, or occupation. And this is, after all, Rhode Island. And they intimidated potential witnesses. And it seems that nobody knew nothing. Which is not a surprise. But anyway, why is the Gatsby Affair important in our past? Well, it was the British reaction to the burning of the Gatsby that uh, created its own court, which was threatening to send off the accused off to England to trial across the ocean, uh, where they would not be able to defend themselves adequately. And this greatly alarmed the colonial leaders who realized this was a usurpation of the Americans' rights uh, that all other British citizens had. These threats led to the committees of, uh, establishing the committees of correspondence and the concept of unification across all the colonies to deal with the threats, which when formally became united uh, as the United States of America. So yes, yeah, so in the larger scope of things, it is indeed America's first blow for freedom. The Gatsby Days Committee is not only historical organization that I've talked about, it is more a celebratory organization. We party. And we party along with George Washington, who actually attended the fireworks back in 1774, two years after the burning of the Gatsby. So there were uh, celebrations right from the start about the importance of the burning of the Gatsby. And participants in the raid were 
but it didn't, through the times with, as long as they were alive until the last one died in 1841. And a large celebration took place in 1875 uh, to commemorate the burden of Gatsby. But wait, what? Why not have celebrated the 100th anniversary of the burden of the Gatsby? Well, the Chicago Tribune took us to task because it seems that little Rorty had forgotten entirely about the burning of the Gatsby and its importance. So as we were besmeared across the national press, uh, we decided that in 1965 to ensure a fitting celebration for the 200th anniversary of the Gatsby affair. And uh, let's see, uh, among the founding members were David Stackhouse and Hazel Wade Kennedy, who were essential to establishing Patuxent Village as a historic district. The Gatsby Days Parade celebration has been a continuous annual event since 1966, and in 2022, we'll be celebrating the 250th anniversary of the burning of the Gatsby. Generations of Rhode Island citizens crowd the Patuxent Village uh, each year, and many have never been in existence without knowing the Gatsby Day Parade every June. So the 56th anniversary of Gatsby Day Parade will be held on Saturday, June 12th at 10 a.m. And we hope you're there also, Secretary of State Gobea, as many other dignitaries will be. Uh, the parade and other Gatsby Days events typically bring in $100,000 into the local economy. And uh, it helps support the restaurants and businesses within the village. So uh, it will also help stem the dwindling number of Revolutionary War reenactment groups, which because of the pandemic have been inactive and have lost their networking support. And they're in dire danger of ceasing to exist unless we support these Revolutionary War reenactment groups that help educate the, the students and the population in general. And now for our incoming president, uh, here is Stephen Miller. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you, John. Thank you, Secretary Gabea, for joining us today. Um, you know, we are a nonprofit group that has been existent uh, for over 50 years now. Um, you know, one thing about the committee that I wanted to mention is it is an all volunteer group. Uh, so nobody's getting paid. We've got a lot of people that really step up to the plate and get this done every year. Uh, it's not an easy task, and uh, we do appreciate everybody's support. So, uh, so now we uh, begin to plan for the parade. Uh, we've got 2021 celebrations, and then the following year we'll be moving into the 250th anniversary. So uh, we plan these activities not really for ourselves, but really for the benefit of the community. And we uh, plan it despite all that's going on with the COVID. Um, obviously, it's a crazy time for everybody. Um, but uh, we do have a lot of hope that we will be able to mitigate all of the risks. And after all, hope is the motto of the state. So, so for 2021, we uh, are hoping that this celebration will be a good riddance to COVID party for all of Rhode Island, kind of a coming out party for uh, the end of COVID is our goal. So, um, Although some of our events have been postponed, uh, a couple of them might be canceled altogether. Uh, we will be kicking everything off with a proclamation uh, day, which is kind of the opening day of uh, Gatsby Days. And that will be on May 22nd uh, with a small event in Patuxent Park. So, uh, we'll also be holding another small event on Memorial Day weekend in the park. Uh, we'll be having a band there and, um, you know, it should be a, a fun weekend. It's always a great kickoff for the summer to, to begin the Gatsby Day. So uh, the following week, the city of Warwick will be presenting their annual fireworks uh, event. Uh, that'll be in Salters Grove, right off of Narragansett Parkway, and that's on uh, Saturday, June 5th. Um, so we will uh, continue to move forward with all the other events. Uh, Arts and Crafts will be in the fall this year. 
will be uh, the weekend of September 11th and 12th. Uh, we just felt it was a little more um, uh, sensible to do it in the fall when, when hopefully the COVID is uh, further behind us than we are now. Um, we also anticipate being able to do our annual uh, block party uh, in the fall. And we'll be looking to do our essay contest and our ecumenical service uh, in June, as we always do. So, um, and of course, we'll be doing the 5K road race uh, that will be uh, either virtual, live, or some sort of a hybrid that'll be uh, taking place in the fall as well. Um, again, we were a little concerned about trying to get that event off uh, under the current uh, environment that we're in. So. But our signature event, the parade, will indeed be taking place, uh, provided the state gives us the uh, okay to move forward with it. We will be requesting that uh, per the general regulations at this point. Um, uh, it is the signature event for the for the committee. Um, you know, one thing most people don't realize about the parade is that it does cost uh, over $50,000 to pay the participants of the parade. Uh, we do have a lot of community groups that are involved that don't uh, cost, but uh, as John mentioned, uh, I believe that, you know, all the colonial groups, um, you know, they need money to survive. So we, we continue to uh, uh, pay them as best we can. Uh, we've had certainly had some struggles this year with our, our lack of uh, fundraising ability, but uh, we're we're moving along uh, very well in that uh, instance for now. So uh, we're also going to continue to work with uh, uh, Providence Water Fire, and uh, I know that uh, uh, Barnaby Jones has done an amazing job in the past with his, his uh, event, and we're looking to uh, collaborate with him over the next few years and see what we can do to. Uh, uh, keep his and our events moving forward. And yes, uh, this year we will indeed burn the gas fee. Uh, and we normally do that burning uh, the day after the parade at our Sunday in the park event. But this year we will be doing it the day of the parade later in the day, uh, also in Patuxent Park. Uh, so and we do have some uh, uh, new things in mind that we're we're trying to get kicked off and try to get things moving. Uh, one, if you have an opportunity, uh, would love to see people um, uh, have a chance to review Adam Bumenthal's um, uh, virtual reality program on the Gatsby. Uh, there is a link on our page, main page at gatsby.org to view a trailer, uh, but really to, to get the full effect, you need to have the virtual reality goggles and the program itself. But uh, it's certainly a, a great uh, uh, thing that uh, they've created there. So. Uh, some of the other things uh, that we've got planned for 2022 um, would be a uh, a kayak race, which would include kind of um, uh, paddle boards, canoes. We'd look to go from India Point, which is where the uh, colonists launched the longboats to head off to burn the Gaspy, uh, head off to Gaspy Point, uh, and then return. Um, also hoping to do some sort of uh, schooner excursions out of uh, India Point um, to out to where the Gatsby was burned and uh, probably throughout the bay. It'll be a great way to enjoy the bay and to uh, learn a little bit more on the history of all of that. So, um, And then uh, we'll also be doing some reenactments of the Inquisition by the British into the burning of the Gatsby itself. Uh, it's been a very... Uh, a uh, fun thing to do in the past, and we look forward to doing that again this year. So, um, We're also looking to do some different exhibitions uh, from the colonial era, blacksmithing, weaving, rum distilling, that type of thing. Um, so we've got all these plans underway for the 250th anniversary. Uh, we're hoping to be able to create a Gatsby brew and a Gatsby uh, spirits. We want to uh, get, get a special logo uh, is in process for the 250th. We'll have our, our Gatsby gear. We'll be doing a kickoff ball. So, uh, and, you know, eventually it's all going to culminate with the biggest and the best parade that our state has ever seen. So uh, we would love input from people. If anybody has suggestions, uh, my email is on the screen, as well as just the general info at gatsby.org. Uh, certainly check out our web pages at uh, gatsby.com uh, as well as gatsby.org as 
uh, as far as updating on events and that type of thing. So I appreciate all, all your time and thanks for joining us. Okay. Hi, folks. And then I take it back over from here talking about future plans uh, to regionalize the importance of the Gatsby affair throughout Massachusetts and New England and maybe the United States. We'll be joining forces with the Revolution 250 up uh, with the Massachusetts Historical Society, use their extensive resources. They've been doing this for several years. And if you go to their site, they have amazing recreations uh, of Lexington and Concord battles that were just uh, featured last week. Uh, and they will be uh, giving a prominent role to the Gatsby affair during this time as well. But it's not just uh, Revolution 250. We're also joining forces through the Rhode Island Secretary of State's office with America250.org. Uh, so we'll have extension, extensive national uh, brouhaha too, we hope. Uh, so this is going to be increase the awareness throughout everybody uh, of the Gatsby affair to everybody. So in wrapping up, we'd sort of like to give a quick thanks to all the preservationists who have kept alive all these historic homes of the various Gatsby Raiders that will go through the ones that we know of. And, uh, of course, we all know the John Brown House, which is uh, the mainstay of the Rhode Island Historical Society. But his brother, uh, Joseph Brown, was on uh, South Bain Street, is a big uh beautiful uh structural house we have the ephraim bowen house here at warwick uh, on fair street uh the captain joseph tilling house on south main street uh daniel pierce's lightning splitter house as the architectural is called because it is so tall and narrow that it splits lightning uh, my favorite is the Dr. John Mounty House in Providence. This is the Shunned House. Those fans of H.P. Lovecraft should know that this house was uh, built by John Mounty, I think while he was still a student at Brown, before he even went into medical school. He came from moneyed sources uh, from the French Huguenots. And H.P. Uh, Lovecraft writes about him in this book and even goes to this green glowing in the dark glob in the basement of the house, which really reminds you of a radon uh, uh, situation in the basement of this house. He was very much ahead of his, his uh, time. Uh, but there are other houses. Uh, Joseph Jenks. Uh, was one of the raiders, as was Simeon Potter. He had many houses throughout Providence, Bristol, and this is a, now turned into a bed and breakfast in Newport. Uh, Stephen Hopkins, while not a burner of the Gatsby, as far as we know, certainly helped protect those who did burn the Gatsby. He went on to sign the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and Captain Joseph Tillinghast was a raider. This is a warehouse recently featured as a House of the Week in the Providence Journal for about $1.5 million right on South Main Street. It is quite quite a structure to behold uh, from the inside. And Christopher Sheldon has a warehouse on South Main Street as well. The Colony House in Newport uh, obviously was a site of the trial, the, the potential trial of the, in Inquisition uh, for the burners of the Gatsby. And of course, we have the famous market house in downtown Providence. It's the center of a lot of things. But where the Gatsby, uh, was started, where did we plotted to burn the Gatsby? It was the Sabin Tavern. This was torn down, uh, in the 1890s because it had been, uh, fallen into great disrespair. It, it had, been modified from a colonial structure into an Italian-esque sort of grotesque structure by the time it was torn down. But they did take this uh, L off to the middle right of the picture uh, on the left and took this uh, room where they actually plotted uh, to burn the Gatsby and cast their bullets in the fireplace and took it 
uh, apart from the Old Saban Tavern, rolled it up with logs up the top of College Hill, up William Street, and attached it to the Talbot House on William Street. And, of course, Mrs. Talbot was the first region, I think, of the Daughters of American Revolution and uh, actually uh, a ancestor of Lane Sparkman. Uh, so it was quite an event to behold, I'm sure. Uh, that house, uh, that apartment is still there, not open for public tours, but this fireplace you see on the left of the black and white picture was actually featured in the 1892 Columban uh, <coughs> exhibition in Chicago as a feature of the Rhode Island uh, Rhode Island presentation during that World's Fair type of event. So anyway, so we celebrate uh, at Gatsby.com. That's our committee website. And we recognize the history at Gatsby.org, which is a historical website. And for those people who think that I'm um, blowing a lot of hot air, which I am, uh, this whole Gatsby affair is really as phony as a $3 bill. And this is a $3 bill from the Rhode Island Agricultural Bank featuring a picture of the burning of the Gatsby. So there. <coughs> but anyway, thank you. And uh, do we have any questions uh, that need answering right now? I don't see any in the Q and in the official Q and A, um, but I actually did want to either give the secretary the opportunity, or I can chat a little bit more about RI two hundred and fifty and the opportunities it presents, and and the way we imagine it working for you know organizations around the state. No, I think that would be great, Lane. That's a great uh, time to to do that. Okay, super. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are commissions that are being formed around the country around the 250th commemorations and the way we're looking at this as an opportunity for Rhode Islanders is to you know bring together all of the different activities that we know you know they'll be launched in the biggest way by the Gatsby celebrations in 2022 but you know we're going to have events around the state for you know many years honestly right all the way up until 2026 and beyond that so what we're hoping is that the commission will be the um the launcher and the kind of um, you know uh, coordinator for a statewide website where all of the activities for all you know by all the different entities and organizations around the state can live in one place. So anybody who's curious about you know what great revolutionary thing can I learn about that's going on in Rhode Island this week or this month or tomorrow can see you know a statewide calendar on this website. We're also imagining you know a state a brand you know an RI250 brand. So you saw the America250 brand. Um, you know, we are the creative state. We have the creative capital. So I'm sure we can we can have some designers come up with a really wonderful brand for RI250 that can be shared. And all of this is kind of following the model of something we did. Um, Secretary Gorbea led the creation of the Shall Not Be Denied collaboration between us and the Rhode Island Council for the Humanities, where we did something quite similar. We had a statewide website and uh, a brand to um, amplify all of the terrific work that was done around the state to commemorate the centennial of the 19th Amendment. So our hope and expectation is that there will be, um, you know, that we will do something similar for RI250 and that everyone will get to join and benefit. And it'll be a great resource for Rhode Islanders who just want to know, you know, what's going on and what can I learn about locally. Um, Secretary, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, um, but I do see a question in the chat that I'm not sure I know the answer to can I can you so this is from Sarah Zurier one of the organizers who says can I tell it can you tell us about the not the Gatsby uh, Rhode Island Marine Archaeological Project so John and Steve can you give us information about that I certainly can address uh, that uh, actually uh, the the opening speaker of today's conference <laughs> was an introduction by uh, Representative Joseph McNamara. <laughs> and he is uh, in charge of the state representation of the Rhode Island Marine Archaeological Project, which primarily deals with the hunt for the, the HMS Endeavor, <laughs> which disco helped discover or which was one of the first ships bringing, bringing British citizens 
to the continent of Australia. It is high value to the Australian government. And we are uh, looking to uh, find one of those wrecks. We appear that one of the ships that was burned by the British in Newport Harbor in 17... Uh, in 1778 uh, was the HMS Lord Sandwich was which was a uh, the the old HMS Endeavour repurposed into a cargo ship. So there is not anything seriously to be found of that is left of the HMS Gaspi, but there are serious things going on with the Rhode Island Marine Archaeological Project. As far as getting uh, the shipwrecks in Rhode Island cataloged, uh, there are very many such uh, wrecks throughout throughout the state that have to be preserved and cataloged, uh, so that we can maintain our marine archaeological heritage. Yeah, so interesting. Um... I was thinking, actually, as you were talking, as I recall, I think the Rhode Island Historical Society was founded partly because of people having forgotten about the Gatsby. Does that ring a bell for you, John or Steve? I don't think that John Howland, who was the original um, president of the Gatsby Day, uh, or of the uh, Rhode Island Historical Society, had forgotten about it. He actually watched <clears throat> the boats leave Fenner's Wharf in Providence, and he wanted to go on the attack himself, but he was only 12 years old. And so an uncle grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and said, get back up on the dock, and wouldn't allow him to go on the raid. But he remembers it well, and he tells the story. And apparently he names a lot of the names of the people that he knew that had burned the Gatsby. Uh, but uh, he he was not actually a burner himself, but he was a Revolutionary War veteran and hero on his own right. Yeah, I, just, I know that they're coming up to their 200th anniversary, and I just I think I remember them, you know, Morgan Graff or somebody saying that you know part of the, the the reason for the founding, one of the catalyzing you know things was that they were worried that people were beginning to forget about the Gatsby, and they wanted to make sure that it was firmly cemented in every Rhode Islander's mind. So not that the founders themselves had forgotten. But that others, you know, had begun to fade from memory because we met many, you know, people had died, right? I mean, it, it's now, you know, in in the past. Um, uh, part of my current working thesis uh, in my publications in the Journal of American Revolution is that uh, the burning of the gas was actually an act uh, conceived and planned by the Sons of Liberty including that of Samuel Adams in Massachusetts, who was curiously involved in the aftermath of the burning of the Gatsby. Unfortunately, Samuel Adams and his compatriots in the Sons of Liberty are well known to have purposely destroyed their papers and their correspondence related to the Sons of Liberty because they didn't want the British coming across them and being able to uh, indict or prosecute members of the Sons of Liberty, but uh, I, Sam Adams was up to his hilt in the burning of the Gatsby, as was John Brown and other members who were known to be members of the Sons of Liberty uh, <coughs> that burned the Gatsby itself here in Rhode Island. So actually that leads to my next question. So I live in Bristol and I'm, I, I think a lot about the fact that Simeon Potter <laughs> rode with his crew from Bristol to the burning. And how you know how did they know if it was if it was a surprise attack how did how did Simeon Potter know to row from Bristol and it's reminding me John of a conversation you and I had I think a couple of years ago you know four or five years ago now about your research about the moon and the tides and so on didn't you get, do some pretty in depth research about the con those conditions that night It turns out that the the composite the the combination of a tide that was able to capture the Gatsby at just ebbing or just starting at a high tide where it would hide the Gatsby point so it would catch it. <coughs> and 
the ability of a uh, moon that was going to be a moonless night or the moon had set for the time of the attack would have occurred only approximately 5 to 7% of the time. And it was pre-planned in my estimate. Joseph Brown was a well-known astronomer and could have calculated the tides very accurately and the moon sets exactly. Uh, this was a Tuesday night. It wasn't the Sabbath. Uh, the ship that the uh, Gatsby had been chasing had carried uh, inviting uh, cargo from New York, including possible gold that would have attracted the Gatsby to a, to a chase it across the sandbar and get it uh, stranded in that way. But also, once the uh, the word of the grounding of the Gatsby uh, arrived in Providence, boats had already started coming out from Bristol with crews, at least one or probably two boats from Bristol to join up with the boats from that came down from Providence to attack. It was a very coordinated attack. We actually uh, celebrate those people from Bristol and Warren that joined in the attack on the Gatsby. Bristol doesn't seem to recognize their their role in the burden of the Gatsby. We actually, as members of the Gatsby Day Committee, uh, rode a boat in the parade of the Bristol Parade back about 10, 15 years ago. Had great fun, but unfortunately, uh, not much uh, attention was paid since we were stuck between the Ronald McDonald float and the Imperial Stor Storm Troopers uh, that were behind us. So uh, TV cameras did not catch us. <laughs> All right. Well, consider me your Bristol ambassador, and we'll work on that because I, you know, I'm I'm fascinated with with the whole story, and I love the idea that people came from Bristol. And so well, we can talk about that another time. There are a couple of questions in the chat, so I'm just going to read them. So this is from David Hammond, who says, "Good morning. I'm representing America 250 this morning." I manage the Veterans, Military, and Family Members Advisory Council. Are there active militia legacy units involved in these activities? I guess meaning specifically GASPI, but maybe also RI-250. Um, some date from the French and Indian War, if memory serves. And then he offers his email, please connect with me. So thank you, David. We'll hold on to that. Um, but I, so I think the question is about um, active militia legacy units involved in GASPI commemorations mm -hmm. and celebrations. Well, there certainly are the Pawtucket Rangers, who are our uh, host group. That was is the military arm of the Gasby Day Committee that was reestablished, uh, and they uh, command most of the militia response during our parade. But we have, uh, uh, we can try. We usually get about fifteen colonial militia groups in our parade each year uh and we're trying to uh to sponsor more to be established <coughs> and to support these groups as much as possible because the pandemic decimated these uh revolutionary war reenactment groups <coughs> and we intend to uh expand on on their ability to appear uh, both to student groups and the public uh, to celebrate our revolutionary history. Yeah, I know um, this is actually Civil War history, but I know that a Civil War reenactment group came and camped on the front lawn of my student, my kid's school a couple of years ago. And it was an incredible <laughs> event and was it cemented in their minds, you know, what that life was like and how these people live, you know, what was going on. And so I think reenactors really have an amazing role to play in people's recognition of, you know, what was really going on. So two other quick questions. Um, one, actually, two from Susan Anderson, um, and I can answer one part and you guys can answer the other. So um, she'd be interested in knowing about uh, revolution, Revolutionary War reenactors in the Tiverton area. Are there any groups there specifically that you guys know of? Uh, no, not that I know of. We do have one. Some in Fall River. We have the Colonial Navy of Massachusetts, which I believe is a Fall River group, uh, which is not far away from Tiverton, which uh, 
uh, is an excellent Revolutionary War, and it can also play 1812 uh, roles as well. A very good fight for drum corps and uh, reenactment group there. Uh, it, the a lot of the groups that portray Civil War will also uh, change their uniform and portray uh, Revolutionary or 1812, depending on what uh, what parade they're going to and what uh, event they host. They're all expert at that. If they can afford the uniforms and the time to come, uh, right. a lot of these people are doing double duty. So I can say also there, I mean, it's not Tiverton. It's, you know, you got to cross a bridge. You got to cross two bridges, but um, the, the Bristol train of artillery, in, you know, here in Bristol um, is very active. So that's another um, kind of close by um, possibility. And then Susan's second question was, will we be sending information regarding RI-250 and I think the commission to all the town historical societies so that they can plan to promote it within their own communities um, next year? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Um, we have actually, the secretary has convened a couple of um, sort of more informal meetings, you know, over the last year and a half um, to get people thinking about RI-250 and the need for a commission, et cetera. Um, and we'll continue to do those and then, and we'll, you know, you can email me and I guess you can find my email, I think. Well, Susan, I'll find a way to connect with you. I'm sorry, I can't remember what the mechanisms are for connecting here, but you and I can connect and I can certainly include you in those going forward. Um, also, shameless plug, um, Sarah Zurier from the Historical Preservation and Heritage Commission and I are doing a session uh, through the Rhodey Network, part of the Rhode Island Historical Society Network, about RI-250 on May 18th. And so lots of ways to learn more about the ways that local communities can connect with the statewide effort then. So it's Rhodey, which is, I'll, I'll put it into the chat actually, um, the Rhodey Network and that information. Um, okay, sorry, I'm trying to manage too many things at the same time. Um, okay. So a question, how do we envision that the 250th commission and the events to commemorate this important moment, ah, this is a great question, will be inclusive and reflect um, the many diverse and sometimes difficult histories here in Rhode Island? And I'll start with an answer to that question um, because I know it's front and center for our office and um, I know also that um, America 250 is thinking about this as well. And, the way I think about it, so I was alive for the bicentennial, and I think about it, and I say, you know, this is going to not your, this is not, you know, your 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 dad's bicentennial. This is going to be a very different kind of commemoration, um, much more um, focused on being inclusive. I think the phrase that they've used at America 250 is a is a commemoration or celebration for, by, and of the people. So, you know, recognizing, you know, for starters, that Hawaii doesn't have much of an American Revolution story, but still the American Revolution story and its ideals and its values can apply to all of the states. Um, and also recognizing, you know, some of the, the less laudatory parts of our history, right? I mean, we know that enslaved people were dragooned into service. They were given their freedom, you know, for, for serving, but they were also in some cases just sent in place of, of you know, uh, white soldiers. So there's a lot to unpack there. And I know that the focus both in Rhode Island and nationally is going to be really on um, facing the good and the bad and being as inclusive as possible. So I think that's a really exciting, um, an exciting aspect of this semi-quin centennial and, you know, the time in which we're doing it. Um, Oh, and I know see. the Revolution 250 uh, in Massachusetts is very actively involved in being inclusive as far as the stories of indigenous people, as well as slaves and debtured servants uh, and all ethnicities, uh, whether you're uh, Irish, Polish, Italian, there are every ethnicity possible. There's one group that's uh, talking about the important role that the Spanish uh, peoples had in the American Revolution, something we don't very often think about. So there's all sorts of different groups that will be represented as we move forward here. And I, if, as far as things I remember, the the uh, centennial uh, celebrations. You remember the bicentennials. I'm older than you, Arlene. Um. 
So someone asks, will we be reaching out to the public for help with the creation of the branding um, and logo for RI250? And I will say that that's still, um, you know, uh, in, in discussion, there was, someone did suggest having a statewide contest for the logo, which, you know, could be a great way to engage a lot of people. Um, or we may, you know, do some sort of RFP process, at, which is what we did for Shall Not Be Denied, um, to have a professional designer, you know, a Rhode Islander, of course, do the logo. So that's still under discussion and may end up being something that the commission tackles, um, or probably something that the commission will tackle as a question. Um, okay, sorry, I'm kind of going back and forth between things here. Um, Oh, well, I had a question for, for you all, um, John and, and Stephen. Do you know if anyone has ever done a reenacting? Well, you alluded to having rowed to Bristol, I think, but has anyone ever done the rowing? Like actually, you know, said, let's go either at midnight or maybe at noon and rowed from India Point to Gatsby Point and from Bristol to Gatsby Point to see, you know, you'd have to get a long boat too, but you know how that actually works and what it feels like? Uh, it hurt my arms. Uh, that they had typically whale boats or long boats that were crewed by 10 men each. Uh, there was probably enough room for another five in the center of the boat. Uh, depending, you try to row with the tide. That's the secret. <laughs> rowing yeah. with the tide because it's a lot easier rowing with the tide than against the tide. Uh, as I recall, the uh, Bristol boat was able to row with the tide up to Patuxent Village and then meet up with the people that were uh, rowing with the tide going coming down from Providence later uh, so that the idea is, is, you know, it's probably six and a half miles from Providence to Gatsby Point and probably nine miles from Bristol uh, to Patuxent Village uh, across the bay. So there's a distance. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, sorry. Um, let's see if there are any other questions that we should be looking for. All right, well, I think that we can begin to think about wrapping it up. Actually, I see we've only got two minutes left, so that's just dandy. Um, anything you guys want to add before we close it out, John and, and Stephen? Now, we very much uh, appreciate the invitation. Uh, we're going to be using these uh, lessons we've learned in the presentation uh, going forward to uh, more podcasts as we get more involved in Revolution 250. Uh, we've got a podcast coming up June 8th, and uh, this was a great experience and practice for us, and hopefully uh, we'll get better with time. <laughs> I think it was just great. Um, and, you know, for, for those who are listening and, you know, anybody else, you know, tell your friends, right? That's the main thing is that we, Rhode Island has this amazing opportunity to take the lead in these commemorations of the 250th with the 250th of the burning of the Gatsby. Um, so, you know, tell your friends, stay tuned. If you want to, um, you know, you can get in touch with me and Sarah Zurier, the conference organizer, or it's all over the Department of State website, also my email address if you want to get in touch with me. But you know, we would like to reach everybody to get as many people involved as in RI250 as possible. Um, so we you know, welcome ideas. Sorry, I'm seeing lots of uh, little clicks over here on the right. Oh, I'm sorry, so seeing things in the chat about um, a Gatsby themed water fire when some boatmen rode down the Providence River, but maybe not all the way down to um, Gaspy Point, yeah, we and you know, water. We can't get past the hurricane barrier. Right, right, and you know, as you, as some of you may know, Water Fire is very interested in the whole Gaspy story as well. So stay tuned for more on that. All right, I know it's going to end quickly, so thank you all for joining. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you.